Ooh, I believe it's John 10. I believe. I believe it's John 10 when it says they go into um uh the 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 comforter uh the, the Holy Spirit will lead you into all truth. If you got the Spirit, the Spirit is gonna lead you into all truth. You're not gonna get no lie. Let's go to 13. Honor and shame is in talk, and the tongue of man is his fall. So right, you gotta be careful what you say. Whereas right now, I'm on this platform, I have to be very careful of what I say. And if I say anything wrong, I um, I would especially love a, a brother could rebuke me and tell me that I'm going off. And I'm gonna take heed to it, and I'm gonna correct my way. Because I, I do not want to have my brothers fall at all for anything that I say. Alright? I don't wanna I don't wanna have my tongue be my my fall, my downfall. Correct? So honor and shame is in the talk. And I hopefully that I'm honoring Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah by me breaking down these scriptures and giving it to the to uh, to the uh Akium that are that are out there right now. Or aqua. Let's go on to Sirach chapter 6 and 20. So now this is talking about um, wisdom. So it's like it's all metaphors. Okay. Verse 20. She is very unpleasant to the unlearned. Right. So the people that are uh, wisdom, many of the people that are out there in the world, they're very unlearned. They have nothing. They just, they love folly. They love entertainment. So wisdom to them is very unpleasant. They're not trying to hear it at all. They don't want to even want to hear any. They don't want to see it or hear it. All right. He that is without understanding will not remain with her. So even if they have a little bit of wisdom, it will not. I mean, they have a little bit of understanding. Salakia. They will. The understanding will not even retain with those people. All right, verse 21. She will lie upon him as a mighty stone of trial, and he will cast her from him ere it be long. It's just wisdom talking about. 22. For wisdom is according to her name, and she is not manifest unto many. Right. Wisdom is not unto everyone that is in this world that you talk to. Your modern day person that you talk to coming from any nation, they, they're they going to have the world's wisdom, but they will not have Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai. They will not have the wisdom of the Bible because wisdom was not uh, given unto them. It was not manifest unto them. And it's not really manifest unto many, but only to the elect. 23. Give ear, my son. Receive my advice and refuse not my counsel. Right. So he's saying, open up your ears, his son, the children of Israel. Receive his advice that he's given you. He's given you instruction, telling you how to live. And it says, refuse not my counsel. Don't refuse anything that I'm giving you. I need you to open your ears, humble down, listen. 24. And put thy feet into her fetters, and the, and thy neck into her chain. So fetters are basically uh, the things that go to like shackles around your feet, right? So the things are around your feet. So when it says put thy feet into thy fetter, so put your foot into wisdom, which is the chains, the shackles, the fetters, and thy neck into the chain. So get a big chain that go around your neck. And bound yourself in wisdom. That's what that that's what that scripture is saying. Bound your 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 feet and your neck to where you cannot move. You're gonna be in wisdom. You're gonna be washed in wisdom. Okay. Bow thy shoulder and bear her, and be not grieved with her bonds. The bonds. That's the, the chains. That get chained up into this wisdom and knowledge. Twenty six. Come unto her with thy whole heart and keep her ways with all thy power. So he's saying, whatever you do, when you have wisdom, seek and keep her. Keep wisdom. 
You don't want wisdom to go out and to go commit fornication on you and leave you. You wanna you want her to stay with you. You wanna you wanna you wanna be with her all day, every day, when you go to sleep, when you wake up, when you go to the bathroom. You wanna have wisdom with you around you all times, just like you have the chains and the fetters around your uh, feet and neck. Okay? Verse 27. Search and seek, and she shall be made known unto thee. So when you open up this Bible, when you pray, and when you fast, and when you uh, talking to Yahweh, Baha Shem Yahweh Shai, when, you, when you're in the spirit, seek and search diligently, and trust me, not only me, Trust Yahweh, trust him dearly, and trust uh trust trust Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, and and it shall be made known unto you. Okay, and when thou hast got hold of her, let her not go. So treat her as your wife. You are married to her. You can't fornicate on her. You can't commit adultery on her. You gotta love this. You gotta love this woman. You gotta love this woman, which is wisdom. You gotta love her. You gotta keep her. Well, you don't wanna let her go. You can't keep her out of your sight. You wanna be crazy for this woman. This woman named Wisdom. 28. For at the last, thou shalt find her rest. So in these last days, wisdom is gonna be the um uh, wisdom and knowledge. Wisdom and knowledge is gonna be the stability of, of, of thy times. Roughly paraphrasing. You're gonna, you're gonna love wisdom in that day. It ain't gonna be no other woman out here that's gonna have your back. No woman. And for the man to, to help bring you out, it's gonna be, it's gonna be Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, and it's gonna be the right hand of God. He's gonna, he's gonna help lead you out. The Spirit's gonna help lead you. For at the last, thou shalt find her rest, and that shall be turned to thy joy. So in these last days, it's going to be your joy. While everyone else is out here freaking out, everything going on, martial law, etc., all the deep prophecies, everything, when Esau comes in like a flood, he's going to lift up a standard and everything. Everything going to be against the children of Israel. But at the time, that shall be turned to thy joy. Wisdom. Verse 29, then shall her fetters be as strong defense for thee and her chains a robe of glory. So you're going to have glory walking around while everybody's screaming, crying, don't know what to do. They're going crazy. You're going to be walking. You, uh, you're probably going to be, you ain't going to be, you're not even going to have to run. You're not going to have to run. You're going to be really walking from corner to corner. You're going to be, you're going to be like a pilgrim. So at that time, your glory is going to shine. People are going to look at you and be like, what's going on? How are these people so calm? Because you got the knowledge and you got the wisdom. Why? Because she was made strong, a defense for you. She was your defense in, the, in that day, that wisdom. You were wise enough to go ahead and, and, and go into these scriptures, to, 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 to be called into Yahweh's and to Yahweh's uh, light, his marvelous light. And he's given it and he's given it unto you through wisdom and knowledge. Uh, I think it was 30. Verse 30. For there is a golden ornament upon her, and her bands are purple lace. So it's letting you know this is royal that you have. This is something that is not given unto many. This is something. Uh, unheard of in the earth golden ornament upon her she's one of a kind and the purple lace when you go back into the in the ancient times purple was uh, a, a, a thing of royalty a thing of, 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 of expense of, of, of a very something very expensive so her bands even the bands around the feathers around your feet, everything around, all the chains, everything's gonna be in ornament and in purple lace. It's, it's something spectacular to have around your neck and your feet. Meaning, you know, going down into the mind. It's good to have on you wisdom, your wife, that joy. 31. 
Thou shalt put her on as a robe of honor. So you're gonna put wisdom on you. You're gonna have her, you're gonna have her in your mind constantly. And shall put her about thee as a crown of joy. She's gonna be on top of your head. She's gonna you're gonna you, you're gonna you're gonna have her in your head constantly, all the way to the end. Those who endure to the end shall be saved. And the only way you're gonna get saved is this, is the spirit and your faith and that wisdom and the knowledge. That's going to be your stability in those times. 32. My son, if thou wilt, thou shalt be taught. And if thou wilt, apply thy mind and thou shalt be prudent. You got to apply your mind to these scriptures. You got you to gotta be taught as well. If you want you if you want to be taught and apply your mind, you're gonna be the person that Yahweh wants. You're gonna be of the elect. Verse 33. If thou love to hear, thou shalt receive understanding. And that's one thing about me, I love to hear. But I know how to uh, discern from things that are that are not of of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. I know I know how to discern different things, different spirits. I've I've grown that much, and I see myself growing every day in my understanding and my knowledge and my wisdom. Verse thirty three again. If thou love to hear, and thou shalt receive understanding. If thou bow thine ear, thou shalt be wise. So if you love to hear as well, as well as me, bow thine ear to the things that are good, thou shalt be wise. You're gonna be you're gonna be a very wise person. If you if you're around an elder and you listen to the elder all the time, he's giving you deep parables, he's he's showing you different things. Because they have much way more experience than you. And you learn from these men, you're going to be a wise and understanding man. Verse 34. Stand in the multitude of the elders and cleave unto him that is wise. So if you see an elder out there and you see him and he's wise and you see him and you, he's walking in the way that Yahweh told him to. That is that is a wise man. And if you see him, if you stand in the multitude of any of the elders, cleave unto him. But don't make yourself equal to him because you're not. But still give him the honor. Because he made it all the way down to the time that he's at now. So still give honor unto the elders. It's not me worshiping a, a certain man or anything. It's me giving honor because Yahweh got him through all the things and tribulations all the way to the time that he's at right now. And he's been in the truth over 20 plus years. How can I be equal to that? I'm nowhere. I'm nowhere equal to it at all. Not even close. And I don't even want to have my mind to even think that I can be able to talk amongst them. That's wisdom. I just want to have my ears open and my mouth shut. I want to be able to buy. I want to be able to bow thine ear. So therefore I can be wise. Okay. Let's move on to Sirach chapter eight and eight. Despise not the discourse of the wise, but acquaint thyself with their proverbs. Mm. For of them thou shalt learn instruction and how to serve great men with ease. I learned a lot of things from the elders and the apostles in GMS. Even though I'm not in, in, in that camp, GMS, because the doors have, you know, they have just recently been shut. And that's the time that, you know, I just, I, I, I missed that, that part. But even though they still put the videos and everything out there, and I still go out there uh, you know, I'm I'm here in uh, Tampa, Florida. I can go out there in the highways and byways, but therefore, I learn from them. So therefore, when people ask me where do I get a lot of my wisdom and, and a lot of my knowledge and everything that I do know, is mostly from GMS. And if I'm going off, I would I would greatly appreciate if any of the brothers they can come rebuke me and tell me that I'm going off because I'm so humbled to know that. I mess up. And if I mess up, 
I would want somebody to point it out and to show me the right way. That's all. We all learning and I'm learning. I'm still learning. But I have a little bit more experience than the average person that is just now coming in into the truth. So therefore, I can help them a little bit, the ones that are coming into the truth. And I don't want to offend anyone that's just coming in the truth. But still, always um, just never despise the discourse of the wise, which are the, your elders and, 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 and your apostles and, and people that have been in the truth for some time. Look at them. Look how these men walk. Look how these men talk. You'll see that the spirit is on these men. Verse 9. Miss not the discourse of the elders, for they also learned of their fathers, and of them that shall learn understanding, and to give answer as need requireth. What I just said earlier. Give an answer when it re when it is required of you. Don't put yourself equal to them. Right? We're going to move on to Sirach chapter 11. Verse 7. Blame not before thou hast examined the truth. Understand first and then rebuke. So understand what I'm saying first. So if I'm saying everything good, great. But if I'm under, but uh, if I'm if I'm saying everything that is of the truth, and you see something that is a lie or something that that uh, I may have gone off in, understand what I'm trying to say, and if I'm saying it wrong, then you can rebuke. And that's that's where it comes to be wise. Whereas when a person is talking and they may say something wrong at that point, but they haven't clarified themselves all the way and you already rebuked them before you didn't understand, that was something foolish. So this is the time that we need to start learning, going back into the basics to learning wisdom. Verse 8. Answer not before thou hast heard the cause. You don't want to be, when a person is trying to bring a cause to you and you already talk over them, that's letting you know that you have a proud spirit on you, that you feel like that you don't have to hear what that brother has to say. Neither interrupt men in the midst of their talk. So when a brother is talking and you just cut them off and you already trying to tell them, that's rude. Not only is it rude, it is unwise. Because the brother could have been making a, a, a specific point that he's trying to drive home and you already talking, you already you just interrupted the brother. Verse 8 again, because this stick with me a lot as well. But I, I rarely do it. I've done it a couple of times and I've gotten rebuked for it. And that's how I learned through that instruction. Answer not before thou hast heard the cause. Neither interrupt men in the midst of their talk. Mm. Verse 9. Strive not in a manner that concerneth thee not, and sit not in judgment with sinners. So get away from the sinners. Don't, don't be trying to party with them because they got a judgment coming for them. Don't be trying to smoke weed. Don't be trying to uh, go fornicate. Don't go, don't go commit adultery. Don't, don't do anything that is against the, the, the uh, words of the law. So therefore, if you're doing the same things with them, you sitting in judgment with the sinners. So that's why it says, and sit not in judgment with the sinners. So don't sit with them. Let them do their wickedness out there. You just do the work of your hour. Uh, we're going to go to Sirach chapter 17 and 25. Return unto the Lord, your hour. And forsake thy sins, make thy prayer before his face, and offend less. So right now, don't don't make no tarians come back to the most high. Return to the most high. And forsake thy sins. So if you're in the sins right now, if you're going out, you could be doing, I don't know, you could be doing porn or anything. You're on the internet. You can uh, you can be out there fornicating. You can be smoking weed right now while you're looking at this video. Return unto the Lord and forsake the sin. Don't sin against your temple. Make thy prayer before His face. So when He's saying make the prayer, I mean get on your knees, face face the east. 
humble yourself and make prayer before his face and offend less meaning don't sin don't uh, willingly sin verse 26 turn again to the most high and turn away from iniquity for he will lead thee out of darkness into the light of health right so when you forsake your sins and you humble yourself and you show and you pray before his face he's going to lead you out of that darkness that you were in and he's going to bring you into the light to where you can see to where you can't go back into the darkness because you got to picture this let's say you're in a dark room right now and you got a light a big old light and it's shining you go walk to it you're going to go walk to it and now when you see that light and everything around you is darkness, you're going to try to maintain and stay in that light because you can see now. It makes no sense for you to turn around and go back into the darkness and then you can't see a damn thing and then you get lost and you get caught up with everything because you never know that light can just, that light bulb can just run out at any moment and everything around you is darkness. And hate thou abomination vehemently. You got to hate it constantly. You don't even want to commit an abomination. You don't want any anything like homosexuality and stuff. It makes you sick to your to your stomach. You even have an even thought of it come in your mind. Or anything smoking, you're destroying your temple. You don't want to have that. And um I didn't not even let's go to uh right here. Let's go to Sirach. This is just in the spirit. Uh, Sirach, I think, is a 19 and... I highlighted it earlier. That's still 18. Uh, Sirach, chapter 19 and verse 18. The fear of the Lord is the first step to be accepted of him and wisdom obtaining obtaineth his love verse 19 the knowledge of the commandments of the Lord is the doctrine of life you gotta have the knowledge of these commandments you gotta be able to do them that's the doctrine of life everything else other than that is what death and they that do these salakia and they that do these things that please him shall receive the fruit of the tree of immortality. That's eternal life. You keep these commandments and you do them to the best of your abilities all the way into the end. And you have faith. He's going to be gracious unto you. He's, he's, he's going to have mercy unto you. He's going to give you the fruit of the tree of life. You take a bite of that. That's the doctrine of this Bible. This is, this is life. Verse 20. The fear of the Lord is all wisdom. So you got to have the fear of the Lord to attain this wisdom. And in all wisdom is the performance of the law. So it's letting you know. For you, if you, if you want to be a wise person, you still have to do the law. That's your performance. And the knowledge of his omnipotent... Op Ah, Salakia. <laughs> of his omnipotency. I'm probably saying it wrong. Salakia. Wow. His omnipresence. <laughs> Salakia. <laughs> his omnipresence. Meaning, he's everywhere. You have the knowledge that he is everything. You have the knowledge that he guides your life. Where he, if you go to the store, he put it in your spirit for you to go to the store for a reason. You never know. It was probably to go ahead and to meet someone. And for you to give them the word out. This is how the most high works. You have to know and you have to have the wisdom to obtain certain things. Let's go to the last one. I'm going to go ahead and close this out. Well, here's another one. Ecclesiastes 21 and 2. Flee from sin as from the face of a serpent. For if thou comest too near it, it will bite thee. 
the teeth thereof are as the teeth of a lion slaying the souls of men. Woo! Let me read that again. Flee from sin as from the face of a serpent. So when you see uh when you see sin right at your door, right in front of you, you gotta flee it, run away from it. Run away from it as if you seen a serpent, okay? Or or a or a, you seen a snake. For if you come too near it, it will bite thee. That snake is gonna bite you just like sin will. You keep dipping and dabbing in sin, one day it's gonna bite you. So one day you keep doing uh uh um you keep fornicating or you keep committing adultery with someone else's wife or something. You keep doing it and one day it's going to bite you. One day you're going to get caught up and a man's going to come in and you sleeping with his wife. He's going to blow your head off with a gun. That's sin when it bites you. The teeth thereof are as the teeth of a lion slaying the souls of men. Your soul will be slayed at that moment just because you were in sin. Mm. Verse 7. Uh, I don't have to read verse 7, but I mean, I can. Mm. Yeah, verse 7. Hold on. Let's read some more. Verse 3. All iniquity is as a two edged sword, the wounds whereof cannot be healed. Mm. So once you keep committing adultery and you keep going, it's like a two edged sword. Once you get hit with it, you cannot be healed. Just like the uh, the uh, the um, the allegory, what I just said about, um, I mean the metaphor, what I just said with the guy coming in and shooting and blowing your head off. You can't be healed from that. You dead. That's death. Mm. That's a lie. 23. Yeah. This is like one of my favorite prayers. And sorry. And this would be a closing scripture. Ecclesiastes 23 and 1. O Lord, Father, and Governor of all my whole life, leave me not to their counsels and let and and let me not fall by them who will set scourges over my thoughts and the discipline of wisdom over mine heart that they spare me not for mine ignorances and it shall pass Salakia and it pass not by my sins verse 3 Lest mine ignorances increase, and my sins abound to my destruction, and I fail before mine adversaries, and mine enemy rejoice over me, whose hope is far from thy mercy. So the enemies, that's the wicked two-thirds, that's Esau, they have no hope. That's why it says, whose hope is far from thy mercy. They have no mercy when it comes at that point in time. That's why it said, verse 2, it says, who will, who will set scourges over my thoughts? Who's going to be able to do it? Who's going to be able to discipline me, wisdom over my, over my mind? Then it says, they that spare me not for mine ignorance. They're not sparing you of your ignorance. And it pass not by, and it pass not by my sins. All right, verse four. O Lord, Father, and power of my life, give me not a proud look, but turn away from thy service always a haughty mind. Mm. Turn away from me vain hopes and con con and con <laughs> and concupiscence and thou shalt hold him up that is desirous always to serve thee such as i am hold me up because i'm always desirous to serve yahweh by hashem yahweh shai verse six let not the greediness of the belly nor lust of the flesh take hold of me 
So the things that the people that are right now, if they're out there, if you're if you're battling any type of lust, sexual lust, uh, any uh, anything to do with the lust of the body, trust me, don't let it take hold of you. That's what he's that's what he's saying in the prayer. Let not the greediness of thy belly nor of the lust of the flesh take hold of me, and give not over me thy servant into an impudent mind. You don't want to have an impudent mind. You don't want to be out here wondrous like the rest of everyone else. Verse 7. Hear, O ye children, the discipline of the mouth. He that keepeth it shall never be taken in his lips. Mm. I think I keep going on. Let's keep on going. The, sh- the sinner shall be left in his foolishness. Both the evil speaker and the proud shall fall thereby. Mm. We'll let no- we're going to let number nine be the last one. Accustom not thy mouth to swearing. Neither use thyself to the naming of the Holy One. So don't be using the name of Yahweh. By Hashem Yahweh and you not ready, you not, you not, you not really understanding the full effect of His name. His name can bug you out. So be careful. This thing is precious. This is, this is, this is precious. So I want to give all honors and praises to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh and to all the elders and all the apostles and everyone out there doing the work in sincerity and in truth. This is the brother Malachi. Shalom.